Okay, folks, let's get started. Uh, today we are going to learn about counters. Uh, again, it is uh, is an important lecture, so please give your fullest concentration. Uh, counters are also sequential circuits because there's a clock component in there. Uh, they simply counts. Uh, and the number at which they start counting and the number at which they stop, it really depends upon how you design your counter. There are two types of counters. We will do uh, both of them. Uh, asynchronous counters and synchronous counters. The major difference between the two is if you notice in the asynchronous counter, the output of a flip-flop is actually feed it into as a clock. Can we have silence, please? Thank you. So and in the synchronous counters, you have a clock, a single clock, which is feed it into the each flip-flop. Okay. So as you can imagine, if you look at uh, the one on the left, you got that asynchronous counter. Say you have, you got, we have two flip flops there. Say we have four or eight flip flops. The output of each flip flop will be feeded into the clock. So it has to go through various stages and you can think it's gonna, a uh, little, you're gonna have a little bit of delay there. Whereas on the right, when you see synchronous counters, as the clock arises, it arises at the same time at the input of each flip flop. So it's gonna be a lot more faster. Uh, so that's the major difference between the two. Let's go through a little bit of theory here. Uh, Asynchronous, uh, the flip-flops are connected in such a way that the output of the first flip-flop becomes the clock of the next, whereas in the synchronous, there's no connection between the output of the first flip-flop and the clock of the next. Um, an asynchronous circuit is simple for more number of states, whereas circuit becomes little complicated as number of state increases. In case of the synchronous, the speed is slow as clock is propagated through number of stages, like I was mentioning earlier, whereas the speed is high as clock is given at the same time in case of the synchronous. Uh, also known as, referred to as the ripple counters. Uh, they're further classified as up counter, down counter, and up and down counter. Today we are going to do up counter and also down counter, but in the future we will do one more example which will be up down counter, okay? Uh, so let's get started with our first example. So those of you who came late, please pick up the supporting material from the back. <clears throat> Okay, all right. So we have a three-bit asynchronous up counter. Now, when you did JK flip-flop last week, what was the unique property of JK flip-flop when J and K were both set to high? Anybody remember? When J equals to 1 and K equals to 1, what happens to the next state? What happens to the next state? The next state equals to what? Come on. Anybody remember that toggling effect? Okay. So your next state is basically a complement of the present state. So your next term is equals to the complement of the present state. We call this phenomena toggling. Okay. Uh, also sometimes referred to as logic race condition. This unique property of JK flip-flop makes them ideal to make counters, okay? Uh, and that's what we are going to do here. We're going to implement JK flip-flops and create counters. So first example is a three-bit asynchronous up counter. As you see, it's an asynchronous, so the output of the flip-flop is feeded into the clock of the falling flip-flop. Initially, you have uh, set to zero, okay? so. Uh, if this is a negative edge triggered because we have a bubble here. So the clock is negative edge triggered. Correct. Uh, so when the next falling edge comes in, the counter goes up by 1 from 0 to 1. When the next falling edge comes in, the counter goes up by 1 again. And similarly, you just follow that sequence Next falling edge comes in, counter goes up by one. Once it goes to triple one, it just restarts to zero and then do the same thing again. Okay, so <clears throat> how is this counter going to work? So I'm going to extend these wires, QA, QB, and QC. Okay, so remember this is my QA here. Uh, this is my QB, and this is my QC, okay. Notice J and K 
for all the flip-flops are set to high. So this is one, 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 and this is one. Uh, say initially the counter is zero, 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 and that makes a good of zero, okay? Uh, which would mean you have zero here. So this is being fit into the clock, so clock is zero here. Uh, QB is also zero, so the clock is zero here because this is feeded into this flip-flop. And QC is zero here, okay? Uh, when the next uh, falling edge comes in, what should be the output at QA, QB, and QC? It should go to the next state, which is zero, zero, one, right? Okay, so the next falling edge comes in. J and K both are high. What is going to be the QA? Remember this right here, when J and K is high, the next term is going to be the complement of the present term, right? Because it's zero, so it, it's going to be a complement of that, which is going to be one, okay? All right? Now, clock is zero, J and K both are set to high. Whenever we have clock zero, doesn't matter which flip-flop you are working with, D flip-flop, uh, SR, JK, or T flip-flop, and the clock is zero, it's going to retain its previous state, correct? And the previous state is, in this case is what? Zero, so it's going to stay zero. Again, clock was zero here, so it's going to retain its previous state. Notice the output went from zero, zero, one, two, uh, zero, 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 two, zero, zero, one, and that makes a binary code of one. Similarly, if you keep on doing that, it will have an increment by one, two, three, four, okay? So this is the basic uh, how the flip-flops work. Uh, we're gonna do timing waveform also. Does that, is that clear, this thing what we did here, guys? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, all right. So the timing waveform is very, very simple. You just follow along your truth table right here. So QA, initially QA is what? Uh, and because it's a negative edge trigger, so let's just make an error right here uh, at all the falling edges. <clears throat> Initially, it is zero, okay? Next uh, falling edge comes in. The output is supposed to go what? <clears throat> the output goes to one, right? And it will stay one until the next falling edge comes in. Then the output goes to zero, okay? So it goes to zero, and it will basically follow this pattern right here. On, off, on. on and off, okay? <clears throat> we'll now move on to QB, okay? Now notice for QB, for the first two cycles, it is zero. So for the first two cycles, it's going to be zero. And then for the next two cycles, it's one, okay? Okay, now the last one, uh, which is QC right here, for the first four clock cycle, it's zero, and then for the next four clock cycle, it's one. So the first four clock cycles, it's zero basically, okay, and then you have the next four cycles on, and then zero, okay. Now notice over here, uh, QA is zero, QB is zero, QC is zero, okay? Here QA is one, QB is zero, QC is zero. For this clock cycle, you got this zero, this one, and this is zero. You got one, one, and zero. Uh, and then you got zero, zero, uh, one, uh, and then you have one, zero, one, zero, one, one, and then you have one, one, and one. Uh, notice this makes uh, a binary code of zero, 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 one, that makes a binary code of one, zero, one, zero makes a code of two, zero, one, one, three, and then four, 
five, six, seven, we know all are high. So that makes your timing waveform for a three bit up counter, okay? One thing that you may notice over here, if you look at the QC, the frequency, you have been able to cut down a frequency here, right? So say the original frequency was one megahertz, okay? So we know that uh, your time is actually a reciprocal of the frequency. So F being one megahertz, the so time period is going to be how much? One microsecond, right? Correct? So one complete cycle right here is basically one microsecond. Correct? But what happens, using these counters, we can actually divide this frequency. What is going to be the frequency for this? We actually have reduced it down by half. Okay? Because we have four cycles here. One, two, three, four. Okay? Whereas we have eight clock cycles over here. Here we have reduced the frequency down to by four, by a factor of four, and over here by a factor of eight. Okay, so if this was one megahertz, this was going to be how much? 0.5 megahertz, correct? How much is going to be this right here? 0.25, and this was uh, megahertz, and this QC is going to be 0.125 megahertz, right? So if lab number four, you were you went with the slow frequency, this is how you actually did it, okay? So here, just an ex explanation of, uh, of that. Um, state diagram for a something, uh, a machine that counts up would be pretty simple. Uh, there are no inputs, it's just, the input is the clock, okay? So the first clock, initially it's zero. Uh, the clock comes in, it goes to zero, zero, one. Uh, then it goes to zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. It then goes to 100, zero, zero, 101, 110, one, and then triple one. Okay. And then after that, it just goes to zero again. Okay. Uh, there is one important thing that you should remember. Uh, whenever we are making asynchronous counters, uh, because this was a negative edge triggered, flip-flop, okay, and the clock was Q. Q is the clock here, right? Q is being fitted into the flip-flop. So this was always make a up counter, okay? How can you make this counter a down counter that will start with triple one, then go to one, one, zero, and then one, zero, one? Well, what you do is you make Q bar your clock, which means instead of QA, QA bar is going to be fitted into the clock, okay, and that would make a down counter, okay. Uh, so I might say in exam, hey, using um, a create a asynchronous down counter using negative edge trigger, okay. So you would know the clock will be Q here, okay. If I say, hey, make a three-bit asynchronous counter using positive edge trigger, so that would mean you have to take Q as a clock, and then you have to use positive edge triggered clock, okay. So this is important, and when we design this, we will actually come back to this slide, this page right here. Okay, all right, let's move on to our second, second example for the day. Is everybody following me here? Okay, all right, good. Okay, now we are going to design a two-bit uh, up asynchronous counter. Our obvious choice for this lecture is JK flip-flop. Because I promise you guys, I'm going to go through all of the flip-flops. So uh, in the last lecture, we did D flip-flop. Today, we are going to do all JKs. And then similarly, I'm going to move on to SR and uh, other. OK, basically, you can actually use uh, any flip-flop. But we're going to use uh, JK. You can use SR or any other flip-flop. Okay, and because it's going to be a two-bit counter, how many JK flip-flops you would need? Yes, guys, come on. Two, okay, because two bits and two, so we, we need two outputs and therefore we need two JK flip-flops. Okay, uh, state diagram would be what? Uh, 
because it's a two bit, so it can go only go up to zero to three. Uh, we got two bits here, so four. So the range is zero to three, correct? Uh, so it will go to zero zero. It will then go to zero one. It will then go to one zero. <clears throat> it will then go to one one, and then it will go to zero zero. Okay. So you can also this is your S0, this is your S1, this is your S2, this is your S3, okay? From lecture number 17, I actually went ahead and pulled these truth table, state table, and excitation table for the JK flip-flop. So our next step is going to be creating a state table and excitation table, and therefore we would need all these tables right here. Okay, so the present state is 0, 0. What would be the next state? 0, 1, right? Okay. And if the present state is 0, 1, next state would be 1, 0. And if the present state is 1, 0, which was it's the case here, the next state will be 1, 1. And then if the present state is 1, 1, next state will be 0, 0. Okay. <clears throat> because we are using two JK flip-flops, so I got four extra columns, one for J1, one for K1, one for J2, and one for K2. I'm going to work on flip-flop 1 first, which would mean the inputs going into flip-flop 1 are J1 and K1. So I'm, I basically look at Q1 and Q1 asterisk, this one right here, okay? <laughs> zero, zero. Zero, zero makes what? So you look at these two columns right here, and then you look at the excitation table for the JK flip-flop, okay? Q1, Q1 star, that's, this is your present term, and this is your next term, correct? This is your present term, this is your next term. If present term is zero, next term is zero, what are the possibilities, what could J could be? Well, J could be zero, one, or zero, zero, that's why we have don't care. So we will just write zero and don't care here, okay? We again look at uh, here, Q1 and Q1 asterisk, Zero, one. Zero, one. One don't care. One don't care. Okay. Uh, if I give you something like this, I will actually provide you with this excitation table. You don't have to drive it. So, uh, one and one. So, what should be the J and K's there? Come on, guys. Don't care, zero. And then one and zero would be don't care, one. Okay. Similarly, we're going to have to do for the J2 and K2 inputs for flip-flop 2. So we look at Q2 and Q2 asterisk, these two. Okay, 0, 1, 0, 1 gets you 1, don't care. And then we have 1, 0. 1, 0 gets you don't care, 1. Okay, and then we have 0, 1. 0, 1 gets you 1, don't care. And then we got one zero, so that gets you don't care one. Okay, now that we have the state table ready, we're going to move on to the logic expression. <clears throat> okay, we will have one for J1, one for K1. One for J2 and one for K2. Okay, so for J1, we actually look at this column right here. Okay, so this we look at the min terms here. <clears throat> okay, so one is one, we know that this is zero, this is one, this is two, and this is three, right. Uh, two and three are don't cares. Okay, how would you pair them up? Yes, guys. Can I just go with uh, this one right here? Right? So what would be my J1 here? This is Q2 bar, this is Q2, right? This is Q1 bar, this is Q1. So the common here is what? Q2, okay. Similarly, we're gonna do it for K1. For K1, we're gonna look at this column right here. 
okay uh, zero and one are don't care and then we got three which is one so again we will make this pair right here okay so k1 will also be q2 we're gonna move on to j2 now so j2 we look at this column right here okay so this is one sorry this is don't care this is one and this is don't care okay how would you make pair here yes the whole thing correct so what would be j2 here one j2 will be one okay um let's do for k2 so we look at this column right here so we got again don't care one don't care and one so again we will have this pair and k2 would be equals to one here also okay so now that we have the expressions it is time that we should do the implementation and come up with a sequential circuit okay i've already i went ahead and uh, just created a dummy jk flip flop and i labeled the inputs j1 k1 j2 and k2 looks like i, I went with the negative edge trigger so what should be the clock going into the second flip flop now so if and it's an up counter right it's an up counter so clock is negative edge triggered because we have this bubble right here and the, we are making an up counter so q is going to be the clock right so which would mean this q will be the clock right here okay this is your clock right here so falling edge uh, what is j1 and k1 Q2, right? So, I'll connect Q2 with J1 and K1. okay uh, what about j2 and k2 those are one right so i can just say one here and then one here is there anything that i need to label here anything else is the sequential circuit is complete here okay all right now let's verify some logic uh, so say we have currently the counter is set to zero one okay uh, because this is one which would mean j1 and k1 would be what so j1 is one k1 is one okay uh, because initially it's zero so the clock here would be zero okay now uh, the next falling edge comes in j and k both are set to high what should be the output here q1 yes yes guys it'd be a complement of the present state and because it's zero so it's gonna go one okay uh, <clears throat> and uh, here uh, when you have a clock which is zero uh, output uh, the inputs are one and one so the next state is going to be what one right so so this is actually one zero so the next state should be one one so because the present state was one zero it went to one one point for that okay all right so this explains how we can come up with a two-bit up counter asynchronous i don't want to do another combination because i have another example so you just play around and try other combinations also with that just keep in mind this is your q1 and this is your q2 okay our in, so we're gonna actually make a code for it also uh, now again there are multiple ways how you could do very log coding for uh, something like this I want to do what we have been doing for the most part okay 
uh, do you guys remember when we did a 4-bit full error circuit? We actually created one module which was a single bit full error. And then we took that error uh, and then instantiated that four times to make four bit error. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to just do one JK flip flop first. Okay. We're going to make one JK flip flop and then we are going to instantiate that. Okay. All right. So I'm actually going to need the um, truth table for that. So uh, you just put your uh, truth table right next to you. <clears throat> yeah okay all right we'll start up with the module name so module i'll say jk flip flop um what are the inputs to JK flip flop? J, K, uh, clock. Um, we also use Claire. Claire is kind of a, like a reset. Uh, and then we have Q, uh, and then we have Q bar, correct? Okay. Uh, let's do the port declaration. So input would be uh, J, K, Claire, and then we have. Uh, clock okay the output would be uh, if you like you can also declare them as wires <clears throat> so you would just say input space wire okay <clears throat> uh, output because we would like to store them so you can declare them as register uh, and those would be what Q and Q bar, correct? Um, okay, then we go out to, uh, to our always at. So what is going to be this right here? If you look at our sequential circuit, is it positive edge triggered or negative edge triggered? It's negative edge triggered, right? So I'll just say negative edge. <clears throat> negative. H. Uh, if you wish, you can also write down as um, at negative edge or negative edge clear. Okay. Okay. So uh, let me just tell you one thing here. Um, when clear is high when clear is one the output of jk flip-flop depends upon its inputs j k and clock okay so we want to make sure we keep the clear high Okay, okay. So if clear is zero, that means what should be Q and what should be what should be Q? It's kind of a like resetting it. And when we reset, we set assign it a value of zero, right? So this would we would say Q gets zero. And what would be Q bar? What would be Q bar, guys? Obviously, there has to be a complement, so this will be one, right? Okay. All right. Now, case. What are those parameters we are dependent upon? Those are J, K, uh, and then uh, clear. And because we have more than multiple, so you can actually also wish them put it into these curly braces if you like. Okay. Why I'm not putting clock in there? I already mentioned here that I'm looking at the negative edge, so I don't necessarily have to put clock in here. Okay, all right. So this is um, this is my clear right here. This is my J, and this is my K. Okay. Uh, if you notice, the clear is high all the time, and we I just told you why we want to do that because when clear is high, 
the output of the JK flip flop depends upon its inputs. Okay, when J and K both are zero, what should happen to the present state? Look at the truth table right here. When J is zero, K is zero, what should happen to the next state? Your next state is what? Your next state is basically your present state, correct? So the Q will actually get Q, okay? Just put this right here. And what about the Q bar? Q bar would be what? Would be a complement of the present state, correct? So you just say Q here, okay? And then semicolon. Now here, J is zero, K is one. J, K both were zero. Here, J is zero, K is one. Okay, let's look at the truth table. When J is zero, K is one. What is the next state? Zero, correct? So Q gets what? Q gets what, guys? When J is zero, K is one. Q gets what? Zero, right? So I'm going to have to assign a value of zero, and then one way of doing it is to just do it like this, okay? And what would be Q bar here? Obviously, it has to be a complement of this, so it will be one, okay? Mm. Uh, if you are getting confused, like how I get these values and uh, how I'm putting it in the code, <clears throat> don't worry about it. I'll record a lecture for this part, and then you should be able to just follow along then, okay? Just think it's given, and we are just following this, okay? Okay, now clear is 1, J is 1, and K is 0. So J is 1, and K is 0 here, okay? So J is 1, K is 0. The next state is going to be 1. So you get... 1 here, and then Q bar is going to be 0. Good. When J and K both are high, J and K both are high, this is what we know as a toggling, right? It's right here. So the present state is going to be the complement of the previous state. So I can just simply write down as, you know, Q gets uh, the complement of the present state and the Q bar gets Q, whatever the present state is, okay? Uh, by default, you would want Q set to zero, okay? <clears throat> uh, and then Q bar, this is kind of like reset thing, okay? N case, N and N module. Okay, so this is the code for the JK flip-flop, one of these JK flip-flop, okay? Now, we have, because we have uh, two of them and we are making an up counter, we are going to in instantiate it over here. Now, so again, I'll start off with the module name. And I'll say this is my two-bit counter. What are the inputs to my, this sequential circuit right here? <clears throat> we got two J's, we got two K's, we got two Q's, we got two Q bars, and then we got a clock, and then we need to have clear, correct? Okay, so I'm just gonna add all of that over here, J, K's inputs, um, <clears throat> clock, here, um, clear, Q, uh, and then Q bar, okay, so input, and I have it, have them as J1 and J2, and K1 and K2, so J comma K, okay, and again, if you wish, you can declare them as wire. Okay. 
okay uh, we have input more clock and clear okay um, <clears throat> what else do we got here okay uh, we don't need this input right here the inputs are done jk clock clear jk clock and clear we need to get outputs now um, so output and the outputs how did I label how did we label them we label them as q1 q2 q1 bar and q2 bar okay so q1 and this would be q right and then output to one this is going to be q bar correct now the next step would be assigning the values to inputs j's and k's so if we look at our um, logic expressions we're going to start with j1 so assign j <clears throat> assign j1 what is j1 J1 is equal to Q2, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So J1 was equal to what? Q2, right? So we're going to say Q2. Uh, and then what about J2? J2 is what? J2 is 1. So you can say 1, B1. Okay. Now let's do K1. <laughs> K1 is K1 is Q2 also, so this will be okay. And then the last one, which is the K2, K2 is one, so we assign it one here, okay. <clears throat> now the next part is the instantiating those JK flip flop modules, okay. Yeah. Um, I went ahead and <coughs> excuse me and actually if you notice the name has to match so JK flip-flop I got JK flip-flop here also uh, we're gonna have space here and then we're gonna have what an identifier correct so I'll just use JK flip-flop one okay and in bracket we are going to mention the inputs and the outputs so because this is flip-flop one So this is our flip-flop 1 and this is our flip-flop 2. In the flip-flop 1, what are the inputs? Come on guys, quick. J1, K1, clock, outputs are Q1 and Q1 bar, correct? Right? So J1, K1. clock clear q1 and q bar 1 S bracket close semicolon at the end okay all right now moving on to jk flip flop uh, number 2 what are the inputs and outputs here j2 and k2 are the inputs clear input q2 q2 bar outputs is there anything that i'm missing here yes q1 why q1 why q1 yeah because remember you have q1 feed it into the clock of the following okay so we will say q1 not clock so identifier name jk flip flop 2 uh, the inputs J2, uh, K2, we got clear, uh, clock is the Q1 here, and then the outputs which are Q2, and then Q bar 2, bracket close, semicolon, and you say end module, that's it, that's your 2-bit asynchronous up counter, okay? Uh, is everybody following me? Yes, guys.
Any question before we move on? I don't want to move on if somebody was not able to understand. I know it's too much. Just practice at home. Go to the lecture notes. And if you have questions, just ask, okay? You should be able to follow along. And so what we did here, again, I just went with the behavioral model and defined the behavior of one of the JK flip-flop using its truth table. So that was the code on the left, okay? And then I was just basically, if you, what you have been doing, this is my top module on the right, right? This is my top module on the right, where I instantiated these two flip-flops, looking at their inputs and outputs, okay? Okay, we're gonna move on to our next, oh my gosh, like six more minutes only. Huh. Okay, uh, there's no way we can get this done, but let's get started. Hmm. But I would like for you actually just uh, do it at home. So let's get started. See how uh, we'll do as much as we could do. So this is a three bit asynchronous down counter. So it starts with triple one, so it will go to one one zero, right? Uh, six, then go to five, uh, five, and then go to four, and then four, it goes to three, three, it goes to zero, two. Okay, and then I just filled it. Uh, state diagram would be, again, we would use JK flip flops here. How many we would need here? It's a three bit counter this time, so we need three of them, right? Okay. So uh, triple one, double one zero, uh, one zero one, four zero one one, <clears throat> zero one zero, zero zero one, and then zero, and then it goes to triple one, okay? Let's move on to the circuit excitation table. <clears throat> it's pretty much the same thing that we did on the previous page. Present states triple one. Uh, next state would be six one one zero. Okay, we're gonna finish the table. So again, I have the excitation table here. We look at QC and QC naught. So this is the present term. This is the next term. Present term, next term. One and one gets you what? One and one gets you? Don't care, zero. So don't care, zero. Okay? If you look at JB and KB, so you look at QB and QB's asterisk. Present term, next term. This is one, this is one. One, one gets you? Don't care, zero. Don't care, zero. Okay? Um, for JA and KA, you look at QA and QA asterisk. So one, zero. One, zero gets you? Don't care, one. Don't care one. Okay. Similarly, we're gonna have to do it for the rest of the others. QC and QC one one gets you don't care zero. And then we got zero and zero. Zero zero gets you zero don't care. Okay. And then we have QA and QA asterisk one zero gets you don't care one. One and zero. One zero gets you don't care one. 0 and 1. 0 and 1 gets you 1 don't care. And then we have QA, QA asterisk 0, 1. 0, 1 gets you 1 and don't care. <clears throat> okay, one last one. 0, 0 gets you 0 don't care. Oh, 0 don't care. 1 and 1 gets you don't care 0. And then we have 1 and 0. 1, 0 gets you don't care 1. So this will be don't care 1. Okay. <clears throat> Next step, what we do, we do logic expressions. Uh, what I'm going to do actually, uh, just to expedite the process, you're just going to cheat and get the values from the lectures. Okay, all right. So JA, we, let's just do one JA, right? We look at this column right here. So we got X here, we got one here. We got x here, we got 1 here, x here, 1 here, x here, and then 1 here. So basically you make the whole thing, correct? So your j a would be equals to 1, right? Similarly, k a would be 1, okay? Um, 
okay, what are the other values? JB is going to be QA bar. KB is going to be QA bar also. JC is going to be QA plus QB bar on the whole thing. And KC is going to be QA plus QB bar on the whole thing. Okay. <clears throat> Final step. Finish the... Uh, <clears throat> so JA and KA were what? JA and KA were 1. JA is going to be 1. KA is going to be 1. Remember this is the positive edge trigger. Okay. Um, we, so I go back here. Positive edge triggered clock. Positive edge triggered clock. And it's a down counter. So the Q has to be the clock, right? So I'll just feed Q into the clock, this Q into this clock. Okay. What is JB and KB? JB and KB are QA and Q, QA bar actually. So I will actually take this. Okay. And JC and KC are QA plus QB bar on the whole thing. So this is basically a NOR gate. QB, QA. And those are feeded into JC and KC. Okay. Uh, this is your 3-bit asynchronous down counter. So if you put the values, initial values there, and try to verify the combinations, you should be able to see it's, it actually makes a down counter. Okay, so remember, you decide how many flip-flops you need. Second, you finish the excitation table, looking at the table for the flip-flop. Third, you create a state table. Fourth, logic expression. Five, implementation. Okay, and that makes your finite state machine.